Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Tom Stewart here. Got my partner, Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Hey. Yeah, we got a special guest today, Matt Ricketts from Better Life Made in St. Louis, Missouri. Hey, Matt. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Hi, Matt. Hey, we, um, we're having a little bit of discussion here before we got on and uh, just kind of talking about some of the alternative uh, revenue streams that we've been looking for before uh, or, or I guess since uh, the, the, the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, Matt was sharing uh, with us, uh, I guess, some stuff that we've been talking about for a while, alternative revenue streams. And he's actually been uh, doing some networking and uh, making making some of that happen. Um, Matt, you want to jump in and maybe share a little bit about what you've been doing? Uh, yeah, so we have kind of made a commitment to go after some more daytime commercial cleaning. So I'm not really committed to going after nights and weekends or any of that yet. I don't want to restructure my business in that in that way. I think it's a totally different market, um, different labor, different, you know, I mean, we have a lot of the resources. We, we could do that. I'm not saying you shouldn't pivot towards that if it makes sense. Um, but uh, I kind of started out with um, we bought some lists and um Put together a uh, a targeted a targeted list of about 600 apartment complexes in St. Louis um, that we wanted to try and service. So, um, of the 100, first 150 calls, we got uh, two quotes, and I closed one. And so it's it's a slog. <laughs> Ouch! What, yeah. what, what, what were those numbers again? 150 different apartment complexes. We got two of them allowed. Two of them allowed us to quote us quote them. I closed one, but it's a four thousand dollar a month um, cleaning. So I, I don't think it's too bad. I mean, it's fifty thousand dollars a year we added just um, by playing the numbers game. Um, and, and so we did about another hundred, and I've gotten um, a couple other ones. I have uh, a, a fairly solid one that's being that's that's in proposal right now that we're going back and forth working numbers. I have another quote uh, on Friday for a smaller property where they, I think they only want us there like two days a week, but still could be, you know, $1,500 a month, $1,600 a month. So these, they, you know, they're certainly, um, they're certainly larger volume than, um, you know, a residential that might have us come, you know, once, twice or four, you know, four times a month, you know, you know, for the average uh, cleaning. Uh, and then just through some networking too. So, um, my my bank. I have a local bank relationship now that I made through this uh, this process of uh, um, diversifying some banks, like at the beginning of this process and moving some money around. And uh, um, Midwest Bank Center here in St. Louis. If there's any uh, Midwest people here in, in St. Louis, has been really good. Uh, they've actually thrown me some referrals from some of their other customers that have been looking for cleaning. So uh, I'm uh, doing a, a bid on a large Harley dealer uh, tomorrow. And they own a couple other dealerships uh, in St. Louis too. So I'm, you know, if I get if I get in with one, I could do another. And uh, we've talked about it. We could do do mornings there before customers come. So we're again, we're not having to change um, our operation. And they're thinking uh, they're thinking five days a week to start, and then potentially seven, which I'm not a fan of. I, I really haven't ever had Sunday hours with any of my technicians. Um, but I have enough part time people that I think I could make that work. Um, it's not ideal, but um, again, I, you know, I've typically tried to do six days a week. Um, but if if that's what it takes right now to make some adjustments and get some and get some new lines of business, I will I'll, I will do that. So that's that's been coming along. I think we'll I think we're on target to add um, probably about one hundred eighty thousand dollars in new commercial accounts uh, in annual revenue if if we close on all the stuff in the pipeline. So well, that's cool. And that's over the last couple of months. Uh, that's since, uh, yeah, we closed starting in April. So yeah, so about a month yeah, of just uh, starting to work that angle. And again, you know, the, those calls are frustrating to, uh, to all those commercial accounts, but you have to remember um, it's, it's not going to be a short sales cycle just to call someone out of the blue. And honestly, it might make more sense if we'd actually sent them a mailer first and then kind of primed the call. I, I don't know the commercial process for sales. I, you know, probably could hire a coach that that could, you know, could coach my company on commercial sales process and what that sales process looks like. And that might be a good investment for us to um, to look at because 
Um, we're just guessing a little bit and just, you know, throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. I mean, um, you know, sometimes it seems like a lot of activity without a lot of results, but, um, you know, in total, I think it's, I think it's working. I mean, there's, there's a lot of phone calls for, you know, just a couple of, a couple of quotes, but again, the payoff is, is significant. Well, we got a couple of questions here, Matt. People are wanting to know like some really simple basics. Like, did you buy a list? Are you cold calling? Who do you ask for? Yeah. Can you give us some basic info? Yeah. So the first 150 leads we got, we did a trial of, I'm going to have to, before I'm going to have to give it to Tom in an email via the resources. Cause it's, it's not coming to the, I was actually trying to search it before we got on the call. Cause I knew people would ask that. I was trying to search the company uh, that we're using for, for data. Um, and I will put that, uh, I will, I will get that to Tom via email so we can put it in the resources, but pretty affordable, uh, about $150 a month for up to a thousand contacts per month. Uh, that you can um, download. And about one in 10 of those already has an email and they have a pretty good email system in there if you wanted to send emails to contacts through their system. I haven't chosen to go that route yet, but I don't know that it's a bad idea considering you're not using your email system, you're, you're using theirs. So you're not gonna get you know a spam alert on your on your uh, main email system that you would use uh, for, your, for your regular customer list. So I'm, I'm open to that idea. Um, I think some direct mail would be would be appropriate. And again, you're looking at this as this is not a quick fix to uh, solve your cash crunches now, because you got to remember, from the time you bid a job till the first check comes in, it can be almost 90 days. So it's not it's definitely not a quick fix for your revenue shortfalls. But if you're looking at it as a long term kind of um, adjustment in your business model, then I think it's worth it. But if you're just looking to bring in some quick cash. I don't think that's you know the the solution, but I'll get you the list. Uh, and so we were we 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 built some lists and we segmented it out by uh, zip codes we wanted to serve and to to be really targeted. We started with areas that were like where we already had some uh, commercial accounts. Do you think that this work? You just do you feel like that you're replacing another contractor, or do you think that this is more frequent cleaning? Just a level of cleaning that wasn't even being performed before COVID. So one of them, so one of them was a new construction. This is actually an area where we've actually had a lot of luck is we look for um, kind of new construction um, buildings that, that are, that are going up for kind of mid rise apartment complexes. So uh, mid rise would be, you know, something, you know, 10 stories or less. Um, has some on-site amenities like pools and gyms and things like that. So we look for those kind of buildings going up or being under construction, and we we try and you know try and figure out the contact for that and and give them a call. Um, with this particular one, um, that one wasn't off the list. It was just off of us seeing a building under construction and and giving them a call and just hitting them at the right time basically while they were looking for somebody. Um, so that was so that was uh, called well anyway the, the building is is still not completely done so we usually start cleaning for these places in stages like th they start moving people in this is really crazy this place has only got like one corridor of five floors done it's got like one hallway open and they're like doing construction everywhere else but they've got they've got an elevator open to the fifth floor and there's people moved in on this one hallway and that's it. And then uh, the pool's not open. Anything else, you know? So we're we're only doing that. We're doing the common areas um, as it opens. But then we have like a four phase plan for um, the different phases of opening. Uh, Tom, have you ever done those? Like when they're kind of like like kind of a apartment as it's being built, basically. You're, doing, you're basically doing construction clean with the yeah. idea of of getting the maintenance cleaning after they they've started wow. up. A lot of dust in the hallways. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, and so we just bill per hour. We, we give them a quote, but we say like, you know, this is your, your bill rate. Um, we're estimating, you know, four hours per day or whatever it is on site um, and try and hit their target. And we've, and I've already told, and you just have to be really clear with those kind of properties is that it's not going to be perfect unless we were there all day. The second we leave, someone's going to track through, you know, dust down the, down the hallway, or there's going to be drywall crumbles all over the place. But yeah, th that's, a, that's a strategy we've done. We've picked up two buildings like that. And one of them, 
one of them we bill out at like 11,000 a month. I mean, and we're actually going to add a third person onto that property here. Uh, it's going to be close to 14 or 15,000 a month for one property. So, um, again, it, it's, you might get one of those a year doing something like that, but it's, you know, and, and now, you know, if you mentioned earlier that you basically have to be the bank on some of those because you might be out 30, 45, maybe 60 days from when you start that account until you get your first check. Yeah. If you got your, your PPP money, now would be the perfect time to, to start doing some of that work if that was something you had an interest in doing because you've got the funds to, to fund the receivables. That's true. That's, that's true. And the other, the other thing we have to remember is um, with the PPP funds too is, is that you actually should have some left over. And if you did need to carry some projects like that, you could. And then when you get it paid back, you could pay back the balance after forgiveness. So you could carry some portion of your loan forward as sort of a, um, um, I don't know, what, what, what do you call the temporary lines of credit? It's just a line of credit, right? Just a mm -hmm. short term line of credit with the intention. If you had something, I would only do that if you had something that was cash flow positive that was going to pay you back like this. Um, I wouldn't do it for advertising or marketing or things like that that are just kind of gambles. But for you picked up a big project and you know that you've got to carry some payroll forward, it might be it might be a good strategy to use some of that for for that too, like uh, and hold on to not paying it ba back all the day that uh, that the program's over. I plan on carrying I plan on carrying mine till the end as a as a line of credit, uh, whatever the balance is left over of what we spend on payroll for the first. Uh, for the first you know, period that's forgivable. I'm gonna go through the forgiveness process as quickly as I can, get what I can forgiven, given, and then hopefully um, hopefully have a small balance to carry, to carry forward for, you know, small, I just consider it a small amount of credit, basically. Yeah, and hopefully it'll be really small, meaning you got the most forgiven that you could. Yeah. 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 You know, that's funny. You mentioned the forgiveness program. I got an email today from one of the banks that, that we got PPP funds from, and it was saying, you know, I know there are a lot of questions out there about what the process is going to be like at the end of your, you know, eight week period in terms of how we figure out what all is forgivable. It's like, we're interested in knowing that too. There is no guidance at the moment. It was almost humorous. It was like they, the bank was just saying, don't ask us because we don't even know at the moment, but we'll figure it out when we get there. Yeah. I do hear though that they only have eight weeks after the um, our PPP closes to um, give us that, that guidance. They have two years because the loans don't technically come due for two years. That they, they, There's not... There's not going to be a day at the eight week point where we sit down with our bank and get this figured out. I can promise you that it's going to be a few months after that before, like we're going to all be in limbo for a little bit. I Just a guess. It is, it is written though, that they have to have, they have 16 weeks from the start of our PPP till they have to give us their, um, the, some direction. A lot of things on, that have already happened. Yeah, I haven't seen my, 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 and I know there's, I'm very happy for those of you that got five hundred thousand dollars in your EIDL loans. Those of those of us that are kind of coming in later are only going to see probably one hundred and fifty. And I don't really need the money. I just figure it would be the way that I figured I would use that money would be is that I would put it in the bank and I would actually spend it all for my paying my payroll and everything else, and then I would just grow my operating balance so that those funds would be unrestricted funds and I could use them for whatever I want. So I would actually use the loan money and then grow my operating balance that I would have unrestricted funds and I could use the money for anything, really anything outside the program. So, um, you know, uh, that, that's going to be a, that's going to be a strategy people have to be really careful with though, because you have to know what your risk tolerance for debt is. And I know some people don't like debt whatsoever. And if that's the case, then, you know, maybe not taking that money when it comes is, is probably a good strategy. Um, I, you know, I don't want to dig into that too much. That wasn't really what we wanted to talk about too much today. But uh, yeah, those of you that, that got five hundred thousand dollars, I hope just be you know be smart with that money because the interest alone on that um, is significant. I, I would think. Would, would, what are we thinking interest on five hundred thousand dollars a year is? Is it is it two thousand dollars per month? Well, I Not per month. happen to have a little calculator right here. 
And we can mm -hmm. tell you, lickety split. It's not 2000 a month though in interest, is it? It's, uh... Liz has got it. I, I'm hoping my, I have the Facebook Live on, so it's glitching me. Okay, 3.75%. Times 500 divided by $18,750. So by to buy. 1500 a month in interest. So, you know, that, that's, the down, that's the downside of taking that money. And, you know, it's definitely a nice, it's definitely a nice cushion against what else is coming. Um, but yeah, there, there is some caution to be, to be, um, you know, having that much, having that much debt without like a purpose for it and paying on that interest. So, you know, I, that that's, you know, especially it has some restrictions and what you can do with it. And, and it's not just a free for all with that. There are still some, some limitations. I have to look at them. It's been a, a bit, has been a minute. So um, I haven't seen mine. Any, uh, any questions, Liz? Um, I'm not seeing any questions come through right yet. I think Matt answered all of them. Wait. Uh, Matt, did you say that uh, when you're calling, who you ask for? I don't think you did mention that one. Uh, yeah, you typically ask for the property manager. There, you know, there, you, you typically would ask for a property manager on site, and and you, you you might not get through the gatekeeper, but a lot of the, the a lot of the apartment complexes you want, um, you know, there's a sweet spot. I haven't figured it out yet. So there's there's, you know, I don't know. If they can have like four or more people working as as contractors on site, like cleaners, maintenance, things like that, then they probably don't need us. It's kind of a it's kind of a medium sized complex, and so at that point, you probably do get the property manager on the phone, um, and he's you know he's kind of a you know doing a few more things at some bigger properties that we have. Um, I'm surprised that we even have them. To be honest, uh, there's there's, you know, a few layers you can't always get directly to that person. Um, but in some of the medium to small size apartment complexes, that's going to be the person that's going to pick up the phone. We're getting some, some questions here about how to, you know, quote commercial properties. And I'm just going to bounce out. This is the uh, Cleaning Business Today uh, website. We've got all of our links that we've, we've done here over the past for uh, smart business moves. And there's a couple of links here with some downloads. We've got a commercial bid uh, rate calculator and uh, basically a, a bid package template that are both here. You can download both of those. And if you go back and look at our some of our old Facebook uh, lives, we have all of those on the uh, Clean Business Today YouTube channel. Can't tell you exactly what day we talked about this, but we, we showed how, how to use those. And while I'm here, hmm, don't know how that got centered, but uh, we've got Chad Henley's uh, PPP expense that we went over yesterday along with his instructions too. So um, we'll review this again, but just to help people who are questioning about how to bid commercial, we have some tools here to help. There's also some other websites that, um, and I know you want to use your tool, but there's some websites that are relatively affordable that are, uh, um, that are fairly useful. Um, you just, you do have to be cautious to make sure you don't underbid commercial because it's, if you, uh, if you have any specific recommendations, that'd be awesome. We just want yeah, to, I, I like a product called clean guru.com or clean bid. It's the same. It takes you to the same place either way. Um, the guy that did it had a medium sized commercial cleaning business, about $2 million. And so he built a software package. Um, you could run your business on it if you wanted to. It's got scheduling. It's got, um, it's basic ticket stuff for the prop for the commercials. It's got quality control stuff, but what it does have is a decent bidding engine, especially for apartments. I've, I have found that it's kind of all over the place for different kinds of properties, but for apartments, the workloading is actually pretty accurate. So the numbers that it spits out, especially over areas that you're doing more than more than 20,000 square feet. And just imagine this, like you, you know, you need to be able to workload pretty, you know, it, it'll give you some workloading. I can't remember what it, what it averages out, but maybe five or 6,000 square feet an hour. 
And in commercial spaces, it's kind of like that quite a bit. This is, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, clean bid. Yep, that's it. It's a, it's a good product. Um, the Dan, Dan, the guy that founded it, I, I think I met him um, probably 10 years ago. And I, you know, is it Dan I, over here in the pop-up? Yeah, that's Dan. Yep. Uh, Dan, so shout out Dan if you're listening. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah. He's a busy guy. I'm sure he's not watching us today, but he's uh, – Yeah, come on, man. He's, he's, he's smart business moves. He's a, he's a smart guy. And, and so he doesn't own a cleaning company anymore, um, at least as far as I'm aware. But, I mean, he really helps uh, – he, he really does help – he has some products on here. So if you really wanted to get into commercial, there's a lot of videos and things like that. You can buy their, their video trainings. And, and it's really common sense stuff. It's like, don't try and say yes to everything. Like really know your target. Like, so when I'm talking about my target with commercial, I mean, I am pretty specific as to what I want. Ideally, I want places where people live, right? Like places where they're not gonna be at during the day, like, you know, apartment complexes. Uh, assisted living communities would be great, except for like, there's a lot of scary stuff going on in those places right now. So I don't wanna be bidding on those right now, but someday again, I think those are great. Um, um, you know, potentially just like, you know, places where retirement communities, where they have a lot of common spaces. But again, I have some concerns about working in places with older adults right now. And, and I certainly don't want to be um, the bringer of COVID to those places. So, you know, I'm not bidding those places right now. Um, but I think those are good opportunities. And I think um, there's a lot of money to be made in those up in those places. And I think, um, you know, if you're doing a good job, they hardly ever switch so it might take a while to get something like that but you know there's um there's opportunities in those places um retail is actually pretty decent because most retail doesn't open till 10 a.m so if you're willing to give them a morning slot you can actually get retail um to fit pretty well within what we do just so again i'm just looking for some very specific things and, and again i'm not going to agree to like mow their lawn i'm not going to agree to take a blower out i'm not going to you know blow their blow the leaves off their thing i'm not going to agree but you'd be surprised at what some commercial cleaning companies will do and what they'll agree to to get a contract so again you know so his advice is is fairly straightforward and, I, and i'm all for it it's just again create a target go after that target do not deviate too much from that because when you do and this is something liz taught me a long time ago is when you say yes to too many things from a customer, it almost always goes wrong, right? There's what's your rule is? You have a rule, rule of three. Rule of three, right? So if they, right. she'll make some, she'll, she'll make some accommodations for people up to up to three things. But once it's like four, it's all going <laughs> to start falling apart, right? It, it just, <laughs> but I mean, it's and I agree, man. Every time, every time we get a customer that's like, "Can you do this? Sure. Can you do this? Sure." And it just keeps piling on. And then you're like, we don't do that <laughs> for anybody else. How did this happen? And then, and then yeah. when whatever cleaner that they have doesn't show up because they're sick or they leave, that property is a disaster anyway because nobody else knows what's going on there, no matter how good the notes are. I mean, we had a customer that, like, there was a certain way to turn on the lights in their house. And, like, there was an order to do it. And that was, like, <laughs> <laughs> It was That's too much. Too much. Too much. I mean, I much. Right to remember what order to turn the lights on. And then, you know, it just, it like that became, there, there was a whole bunch more stuff than that. Like what kind of trash, like there was like, there was like five different trash cans out in the garage and like just sorting the trash. I mean, just was like insane at this house. So again, you know, same thing with this commercial stuff is be really clear as to what you want. And, and again, it's not about necessarily chasing every dollar. It's about chasing dollars that are, again, going to be, again, going to be profitable. We don't want to just be, you know, picking up any work for the sake of it. Well, speaking of your um, chasing dollars, uh, we've had quite a few people ask, Matt, um, uh, how, how do you price these? Do you have a target hourly rate? Do you, yeah. you know, how, how do you do that? I have a sliding scale. I don't remember exactly what it is off the top of my head, but. But typically, typically our, our base rate is somewhere between fifty to fifty-five dollars an hour for for residential work, depending on you know frequency and things like that. But that's not going to get you commercial work. So typically, we have a so if they have ten hours or more, I think it's around thirty-nine dollars and like thirty-nine dollars uh, per hour for us. If they have fifteen hours or more, I think it's around thirty-six. 
uh, 20, 20 hour, 20 to 25 hour. I think it's like, 20, I think we, we go down to like 32 and then 30 hours or more. I think we go down to like 29 and I won't go any lower than that. And the reason you can go lower. And I think Tom would agree with this is, is like once you're on a site that much, like you're on a property that much, there's no drive time. Your employees check in and check out from that property. There's much less overhead of the, of the, you know, things between jobs and all the other things. And you're only dealing with one personality of, you know, quality control and things like that. So um, typically you have to know your own numbers, but for us, we can still make a decent profit at $29 an hour. Now that might change now with additional, you know, PPE and, you know, equipment that we need to, we might need to reevaluate that. Someone was, someone was like, you know, telling me the other day, they're like, can you believe we're spending an extra, you know, uh, like $4 a technician today on, on uh, PPE. And I like did the math and I was like, Oh yeah, I guess we are spending about, I, I figured, I think I was close to $3 a day with more gloves. Um, you know, um, you know, the masks that we purchased were, were amortizing out, but again, you know, figuring out that they're probably going to lose one of those every two weeks or something like that, that we had sewed for them, you know, we're, you know, figuring all those out. It's, it's like, you know, they're not going to hold up forever. Um, I, I think $3 a day of additional cost. So, so maybe, maybe, uh, you know, it's, it's $30 an hour instead of 29, but whatever you, you have to figure out your own number, but it can certainly be less than your residential because you don't have all the overhead. Tom, do you have a, do you have any kind of thoughts on that? Well, just the general thought that, you know, when you're doing what you would, I guess, in commercial world call route work, when you, when you're doing residential, you're probably spending at least 30% of your day looking out of a windshield, whereas you're doing a lot of this property management work, you, you can get a higher, what we call efficiency rate, the amount of time cleaning versus on the clock. So that alone gives you a lot of opportunity to get a lower hourly bill rate and still effectively getting as much, if not more revenue per day off of that person, just because they're, you've got more hours to bill. Yeah. We have, we have some properties uh, that are almost 98% efficient. The only, the only time that's inefficient is the one day a month where they come to the office and pick up supplies. And then, you know, they start their morning at our office and, and load up supplies for the month um, to there. We can make it hundred percent efficient if I just had a manager drop that stuff off. But we actually want them to check in and, and you know go over stuff at our office real quick so, too. Yeah. So and just a reminder to everybody that's listening to the guys talk here, they are talking about when you're on a property for a long period of time. So just because you have a, a property that you're going out there five days a week, that doesn't automatically mean that you're going to be able to charge less. You're going out there five days a week and they're only going to have you out there for an hour. That's actually a, a, more of a problem because now you've got all this additional overhead that's going in. It's great that you're out there. I'd still, cut them, but I'd still cut them down probably. If they're going to give me 10 hours a week, I'd still cut them down to probably $39 an hour or so. That's where we kind of – the first price break for commercial for us is, is 10 hours a week or more. So, yeah, so if they're only doing like five hours a week, they're not getting any – they're not getting any special treatment. But if they're mm – -hmm. If they're at about ten dollars, if they're at about if they're at about uh, ten hours a week, we start to give them a significant break on on the, uh, the 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 bill rate. So I wouldn't do anything less than you're right. Ten ten hours a week is kind of the is kind of the minimum to do that. But that that starts to put you know one person twenty five percent of their week is covered. You know, like that's it start, starts to be significant. You know, um, and you know if you can find one or two other properties right there. A really great strategy would be to market to all the, the other businesses in the in the in the strip mall that they're in and see if you can offer a discount. I mean, I'm not I don't know the answer to that. Again, I'm just getting into commercial work myself and um, or, or, or really focusing on growing it as a larger percentage of, of our business. But um, yeah, that's that's uh, I guess it's not really what we came to talk about today, but we're 30 minutes in and that's what we're, that's what we're on. So, um, yeah. Well, I, I do want to also throw a name out there. For those of you that are looking to get into uh, more commercial, Sharon Cowan does a lot of commercial work. She does a lot of free training, which I am always a big fan of. And um, a lot of times you can find people out there in the commercial world that are going to give you a lot of advice without a lot of experience. Yeah. And that's not the case with Sharon. So I actually won a, um, 
I actually won a training from Sharon and some consulting at one of the RCSI conventions, and I didn't use it because I think I was oh. stubborn to think that I needed help with anything. But Sharon, if you're out there, <laughs> I'll take that help. You're actually really. <laughs> uh, I know it's probably, it's probably expired, Sharon. I, I, I get it. Um, but uh, yeah, I had won a, uh, a consulting package from her, from Debbie's, uh, from one of the Clean for a Reason um, events, and I never did anything with it. And uh, yeah, I'm regretting that now. I think that I wish I knew a lot. More. <laughs> yeah, no, Sharon Cowan is is quite knowledgeable and has uh, a good approach to commercial. I think she would be a good resource for people uh, as well. So yeah, um, that that's a good call. And right now she's got some free training going on right now for you know the COVID pivot that everybody's doing and talking about and she's she's got some fresh ideas a lot of times people think oh no the people that have been around forever it's just old school everything's you know all the old ways of doing things but Sharon has a lot of fresh information so if you're looking for a commercial you might might look into that uh, her last name Cowan C-O-W-A-N I remember when I got um, into this business and I was in sub, I was sub 30 when I, you know, came to my first air CSI convention. And uh, now I'm probably one of the old guys now coming to, uh, coming to stuff. And there's all these new smart people coming up with all these, you know, brilliant ideas. And, um, you know, there's, there's all, we should always be learning from one another. There's no, yeah. You know, whether someone's been in the business for 30 days or 30 years, there's people, there's people with good ideas and definitely learning from each other is, is a smart move. So this is uh, Sharon's website. If you want more information, she has a really good resource on the commercial side. Agreed. Here, meet, meet, meet Sharon. There she is. <laughs> Looks just like her too. Yeah, she's, she's great. I, I, you know, if you, if we get to have a convention again, anytime soon, um, you know, she's always, you know, at the ISSA shows or the, the ARCSI. I'm not sure what we really call it now, um, but uh, a very good resource for for people pivoting now and for if they, you know, want to, you know, increase that revenue stream. And I think, again, I think I'm at this point, I think it's worth it for my company to invest in um, some coaching on the sales process and the, you know, lead nurturing and you know best practices. We've had some good luck, and um, you know that I you know I think that that's you know some of it's just we've thought through this, but there's a lot more to this than we know. So um, yeah, I, yeah, I think that would be a good investment for us too. So everybody's looking for what they're going to do, right? What's the pivot, and how, how are we going to be making more money and and taking advantage of more that's out there. But Matt, I really like that uh, you said that you are finding some of this commercial work because I know in the beginning when uh, everything started coming down and residential was closing down, oh, it was scary. And I was, you know, I, we, I had people on the phone just, you know, eight hours a day calling, calling, calling and not getting anything. So you can't expect it. Super you can't expect it to happen overnight. It's just, it's one of these things that's got a long sales cycle. And so, um, yeah, I, I, we were, we were calling grocery stores and asking them if they needed their belts wiped down between customers. We were trying to think of everything like, and oh, I, that's good. I, of that. <laughs> I, I don't know. I actually think they should be doing that. I, like every time a customer leaves, I, I want to see somebody go through there, like spray everything down, wipe the, wipe the keypad down. That's some stuff that I'm like, I, there, there could be an opportunity there, but I, I don't know that anybody's willing to invest in in doing all that, like these these places. And and the risks seem to be fairly low if you do wash your hands after, you know, like the contact. It, I don't know. I it made me so nervous. So I'll tell you, public. you, you can do what I do, Matt. I bring gloves with me, and when I get ready to check out, because I do the self check, I put my gloves yeah. on, I touch all the keypads, load up my stuff. And as I'm leaving, toss my gloves. Might be, be decent. I, At least yeah. not touching all that stuff. Just touching all the food that everybody else already touched. Oh, and <laughs> to not not to get into the spraying and all that stuff too much, but at one of our apartment complexes, they did ask about it. Um, and what we're doing for them is we bought some paint sprayers, some Wagner low pressure paint sprayers, low pressure, high volume. 
And they put out a, a very fine mist at 20 microns, which is the size that you would want for uh, these foggers or misters and things like that. And we're doing, you know, a, a mist on all the, on you know, a fog or mist on all the surfaces and then coming back through and wiping it down. And really we, we, the, con the, the contact person there are, are the property manager and we both agree that it seems kind of silly, but it makes the residents feel good right now. <laughs> so we're, we're doing it um, as, a, as a bonus thing a couple days a week, we're, we're throwing that in and um, it, we're, just, we're just taking time from one thing to another um, just right now to again, make the residents feel better that um, there's a maximum amount of disinfectant being used in the building, I guess. So, yeah. Psychological, it's a real thing. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I don't know that I believe that it's, that that's really going to, you know, versus just doing the high touch point things by spraying and wiping and, and whatnot. I don't think that there's much difference, but again, it's a psychological difference probably. The psychological counts though. I mean, it can't hurt. I agree. I don't think it's shifting the, the efficacy, you know, to, to the positive side in any significant way. But if everybody feels more comfortable being in the building and if we did everything else right in terms of, you know, cleaning the high touch areas the way we were supposed to, then, you know, it is safe and people are feeling good about it. So, yeah, and, and if you're looking, you know, I know everybody's probably like, oh, I can't get to these sprayers or foggers. If you're looking to get some of these things, um, a friend of mine that's in restoration told me about this, about using these uh, uh, low pressure, high volume paint sprayers. So specifically the Wagner ones are around a hundred bucks. Um, you know, if you can get a Fogmaster Junior, great. They're kind of awkward to hold. This is just like a spray, you know, very, you know, very ergonomic, um, very easy to hold and maneuver. It is a plugged in device. So you're, you know, like your vacuum, you're going to, you're going to be tethered. Um, but it's, and again, I'm not doing this in any residential settings personally. I, I think there's too much moisture personally for this to be doing in, in residential settings. It, you know, people are like, oh, it's only a little bit of moisture. Even with the electrostatic ones, I've tested them. They put down a pretty good amount of moisture. I don't want to be spraying computers or electronics or any of that stuff with this, with this stuff. Um, we're, again, doing high touch points like doorways, like, you know, all the way up hallways, you know, where there's, where there's handrails. Um, bathrooms, all the stalls, all the toilets, like really, I mean, areas that would, would not be damaged by, again, your disinfectant process. Um, I'm, I'm not comfortable doing this in homes yet. I know a lot of you guys are and are doing that and you probably could teach me how to do it, you know, properly. So I will, I will defer to you guys if you're fogging, you're misting in homes and things like that. Um, I, I see a lot of opportunity with, with that for some damage and it could be more, more costly than any profits that I make um, doing doing that in homes. But in the commercial settings, I think it makes some sense. And Linda has a lot of experience cleaning big offices, banks, dental offices, et, et cetera. And so you're, you have an in already, Linda, so it's easier for you to jump in and be doing a little bit more. It, it is definitely harder if you don't have the commercial jobs already set up that you're cleaning. Yeah, um, you know, a lot of places are already getting cleaning, uh, and and they have already been getting cleaning. That's why I like your idea, Matt, of uh, these places that are just being built. I had never even, I didn't even know that places would put somebody in a wing while they still got four and a half more <laughs> floors to clean. They're building them fast. They're building them wow. fast. So, so it'll be. It's only like, you know, 10% occupied right now, but they'll be like, they'll be adding more on each day. I mean, it's, they're building it so fast and um, it's pretty impressive to be, to be part of that process too. And you really do feel like a partner in it when you, when you get in on that, at that phase of the, of the, you know, you know, getting it in, it's kind of, it's kind of exciting. We did uh, one of our first big projects ever was, and we didn't get paid for this, but we got picked to be the uh, cleaning partner for, uh, remember the moment they build those houses on TV real quick, the home, the home makeover show. Real home makeover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it I called? I remember that. Yeah. Total home makeover. Home makeover? Yeah. yeah. Home makeover. Yeah. It was like, well, anyway, so in my name, so it was like, it was in Shrewsbury, which is a little suburb of, uh, of, uh, St. Louis where my wife is from. 
And, um, you know, I guess we had a car like on our street, like the same street that they're doing this. So we had one of our company cars on the street. And, uh, and so like one of the producers came and knocked on our door. They're like, Hey, would you guys like to do the cleaning for this? We'll feature you on the show and you can use it as a, you can use it for up to five years that you were a, a partner on, you know, total home makeover, whatever it was. And it was fun. I mean, it was fun. It was a blast to do. Uh, it was exhausting. Um, I'm not saying do that stuff now. Maybe you didn't do that. If there is anything like that now to, to go out, I don't know what there is promotional wise to go out and do free cleaning. But, um, but anyway, we, we, I've never worked harder or faster in my life. And it was, it was a blast to do. Um, so these construction kind of jobs, uh, I was hoping we would turn that into, you know, some post-construction work afterwards. And we did a few of those jobs afterwards. We got some ends with some contractors I decided that work is not necessarily for us. Like that is hard physical work. And I didn't have the quite the right staff for that. I mean, I could do that work. Um, but like hauling out like big bags of trash and like when you're doing like real post-construction cleaning, it's incredibly physical. So again, knowing what your target is and what you're, and what you're doing, um, you know, we thought we'd go after that kind of work and it's super profitable. And if you can get it, I say do it, but you just have to know that you probably need a different kind of staff than you have doing maintenance, cleaning, and, and residential. It's fairly different, more like extreme, a journey. Extreme makeover home edition. That's it. I said I still hey, have a hard, job. hard hat that I walked off of on that day, and uh, uh, we have a, <laughs> the shirts framed from that. It was it was a fun experience. That was that was probably. 10 or 12 years ago, um, very fun experience. So again, it's fun to be part of those commercial, those buildings. You're not doing that kind of work necessarily like hauling out trash and you know all that kind of stuff, but it is messier cleaning than what you're used to. It's just not as physical as like full on construction cleaning. So it's, uh, it's fun. It's fun to get in on those projects early. Well, it looks like we do have a couple of questions here, Matt. Uh, let's see, we have an opportunity to clean some pool baths in the residential area two times a week. Our county is also requiring that their pool chairs are all disinfected daily. Some chairs are cloths, some are vinyl. We can knock out the baths very quickly. Any idea how to help them and how to price that? I just think you're going to have to do it based on time. Like, go, like give, it a, give it a rough idea. Right. Tell, them, tell them what your hourly rate is and be like, we're going to work as fast as we can. Um, I think if you had a sprayer of some kind, you could probably do those things really quickly and really efficiently and, and much lower than if you were hand wiping them. Um, but you just want to make sure that whatever, you know, chemicals you use are, are non caustic and are safe on the safe on the vinyl material. And you have to remember, you know, even if it's a non chlorine bleach, um, you know, which a lot of these products are like a, a lot of these products that are, that are readily available right now um, are these tablets and things like that. Um, they're non chlorine bleaches, but they still could fade fabric in the sun. So I don't know, Tom. I mean, that's sort of always a concern with any kind of disinfected and, and sunlight and being outside. That's certainly a, a, a concern that I would have. And, and I would be having this discussion along with whoever the property manager is, whoever the client is, and explain what the risks are. I mean, if you explain up front, it's education. If you wait until after something happens, it's nothing but an excuse. So you want to have the discussion on the front end and say, hey, these are the products. These are the options. These are some some of the possible risks. What do you guys want to, want to do with this? Yeah, um, no, you know, especially disinfecting. Like there's no perfect solution there because any of those products are going to probably you leave Lysol on them. Like you spray everything down with Lysol, right? Well, then you've left like a toxic film on those things. They're not really clean. At least with these tablets, they break down into just water and oxygen. They don't usually leave like much leave behind residue and things like that. But potentially with, with, you know, sun oxidation and things like that, you could, and again, I'm not a chemical expert by any, on, by any measure, but I know enough about, I know enough about this stuff to say, whatever you do, you need to be cautious and probably, yeah, have those conversations up front. Like there are some risks to doing this, um, these are, these are the products that we'd recommend, but, um, you know, there are with, especially with the vinyl, um, that, that material is subject to fading, you know, the, 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 question was, how do I price that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing that I, that I think is important to emphasize, regardless of what type of job you're talking about, the real question you're asking is 
What is my cost going to be? How long is it going to take? Really? Because you're really talking about your labor. So you can start with how long is it going to take and then figure out what you need to bill per hour. And that's how you price it. Yeah. Yeah. And don't okay. But I got to say one more thing on top of that, because you don't have to charge just that amount. That's, but that's the least amount that you can charge. You, you can't charge, you can't charge less than that. More is better. So if your market will bear a higher price, charge that. Don't, yeah. don't always charge the least that you can possibly get away with. You know, there's opportunities. For, sorry, Matt, you can't talk right now. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you, there's opportunities right now, especially in, in the market right now, to make a little bit more money. I'm not saying gouge anybody, but don't be trying to do everything at the cheapest possible price all the time. All right, go ahead, Matt. No, I, I was going to say, I have to agree right now is not the time to be the lowest bidder. Not, right now is the time to demonstrate expertise, to demonstrate value. And, and again, I'm not bidding these properties low by any stretch. I'm going in there. Uh, I'm going in there and giving them fair pricing, you know, based on what we need to make a profit over over the long term. And uh, we're getting work. I mean, it's you know, we're, we're not going to win every bid with that strategy. But if you win every bid, you are probably pricing too low. Like that's. Yeah. When I, I used to have conversations with people, like, you know, I, and, and I've learned to be nicer about it than I used to be. But like people would tell me, like, I win 90 percent of my bids. And I would always be thinking to myself, I'm like, OK, like you're going to be out of business. And I would think to myself and I, I wouldn't say it to them or if I did sometimes say it to them. <laughs> but I would say you're going to be out of business in probably a year if you're winning 90 percent of your bids. You're probably you're probably underselling and you're you're going to be in a situation where that's not going to be profitable at some point. There's going to be. Um, we don't, we don't actually have a fixed cost model of business. Like our prices actually increase as we grow. So, um, you know, you know, you add people, you add, you add, you know, complexity to your business as you grow. Um, you can't, you can't bid it on a price that you have today. You have to be bidding it for what your future costs might entail, right? As you grow and need more additional resources. Cause if you bid it based on, okay, I'm just a one, one person operation, well, then you're not going to be paying for that person that you need to do that work down the road. You're always going to be the one doing it. I don't think we need to have that conversation too much. I think most of our people here are business owners that have technicians working for them. But um, you want to you take into consideration all of your costs. And some of your costs are hard. You know, your labor is your biggest part of it. We've talked about, you know, the PPE and those are, you know, a bigger piece of our, our costs than maybe what it was a few months ago. But there's a lot of implied liabilities that go along with this. We were talking about damaging, you know, surfaces because of using the, the various products that we might be using. There's a liability. There is some hidden cost in that, that if something gets damaged, that could be, be a cost to you. You're cleaning in the COVID-19 world. You've always got issues of, you know, who knows what can happen. So you need to be factoring all of that in and, and, and charging accordingly. And when you're presenting your price to your prospective client, those are the things that go into the discussion. It's like, well, this is what we're charging. Well, let me tell you all the things that we're having to consider in order to come up with this rate. And if you're going to hire a professional company, these are the things that any professional company is going to have to consider when they're giving you a rate, kind of setting the expectation. It's like you can get somebody lower, but if they're not charging this amount, then they're probably leaving something out that's really important to you in this COVID-19 You have me thinking of something that happened last month while we're in the middle of like making no money. One of my technicians at a commercial property uh, in the parking garage kind of backed and you know, there's those wires usually to prevent you from like falling over the next level, right? She, yeah. she backed her car into one of those things and it snapped the wire. It looks like, you know, maybe it'd be like, I could probably go out there with like a wrench and fix it and, and do it myself. Well, I don't have time for that right now. Like, I need to get the bolts and I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm like, it doesn't look that complicated to me, but I got the bill. It was $925. I was like, oh, oh, wow. thank God it's a property that pays us $6,000 a month. But I mean, you know, again, you go out every day you go out, there can be, you know, there's like Tom saying, sometimes it's not such a hidden cost, like damages, things like that. So $925 guy wire that I've got to pay for. And, and, you know, that's coming due any day now, basically. I'm still, I'm still waiting for the final invoice. That was the estimate. So it could be higher. <laughs> it could be higher than that, but I forgot about that. Like, you know, in the middle of like making no money hardly at all, or a fraction of what we normally make, I'm, I'm, you know, we have like a $925 damage. That was that. Can you pay for that out of your PPP funds? I don't think so. 
I wish we could. I wish we could. Oh, but you can pay for it out of your idle loan. So, hey. All right. Yeah. Hey, Tom, um, they've got a pretty good conversation going on over here. I'm going to leave them to that. But uh, one of the questions was, when is the next, P next PHC class um, being launched? So maybe you could talk a little bit about that now because we've only got 10 more minutes on this call. And so I want to make sure that any answers or questions are answered. Oh, I'm so sorry, Sarah. Just ruined a wood floor today with oven cleaner. Sweet. <laughs> Been there, done that, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I, yeah, I think I saw pictures of that, Sarah. Sorry. Yeah. Well, okay. Cleaning business today. That's where you can get to our, our training. We've got uh, two classes going on here. And I will attempt to show you. The first one, and we launched this a few weeks ago, and we still have, have people signing up for this every day, is uh, our COVID-19 class. This is a three-hour class, and it's specific to, to one thing and one thing only. It's like things that you need to know if you're uh, cleaning homes every day in a COVID-19 world. And you know, we talk about PPE. We talk about you know how you need to do to keep yourself safe, how you... Uh, Property, properly sanitize and disinfect, all the safety issues with using the chemicals and so forth that we're disinfecting with, how to remove bed linens properly. It's an awesome class and it's three hours. And at the end, you take a, a test and get a certificate of completion. But the class that uh, we launched last week, last Wednesday, is the uh, PHC class, Professional House Cleaning. This is a much more broader class. This too is designed for cleaning professionals, for, for folks who are cleaning homes every day. Um, there's a lot of things that we don't include here that it's more appropriate for business owners. And you know that you know is, is a class for another day, but this is for the people that are actually cleaning and it's put together in a way using, uh, I guess a lexicon uh, uh, you know, that's gonna be relatable to to a broad broad scope of people in in, in, in the house cleaning world, and it's uh, affordably priced. It's uh, ninety nine dollars, and it's all online. It's seven classes plus a, a, a test at the end, and there's a certificate of completion that goes with this. The first class launched last Wednesday. The second class is coming out tomorrow, and it'll be out before we go live tomorrow at five o'clock. So. Be looking for the second class safety. Um, I think it's all. So awesome. Debbie specifically asked. So hopefully, Debbie, you were on right then. Um, the second class is launching tomorrow before we go live at five p.m. I think it's awesome. What do you guys think? I got. I've, yeah. I've seen, you know, I've, I love I've, it. I've seen it. It's so uh, you know, it's uh, it's going to be really good. Uh, Joe Walsh, uh, a friend of ours, and some of you know Joe, I know, and he's uh, been a guest on on uh, Smart Business Moves, and uh, he's he's actually uh, presenting that class. So um, if you haven't signed up for that class, you uh, go here at the end and hit purchase, and you know there's. Uh, all kinds of bulk discount options. If you buy more classes, you get percent discounts and you can sign your people up, you know, after, after the fact it's, um, it's hey, hey Tom, Leslie wants to know if there's a way that she can check in on her employees progress and who, who has done it or hasn't. Okay. No? I am, um, gonna, you know, sometimes I get over my skis a little bit and kind of share stuff that we're working on that, that, that that's not there yet. But but I, I feel good about this. The actual learning management system that we currently are using, we're going to be switching to another platform. And this is going to be happening over the next couple of weeks. So it's not going to happen in the next 48 hours. But the platform that we're on now, no. But the platform that we're going to be moving to, yes. And everybody who's signed up for this program under the with, with the current platform, we're going to be moving their account over to the new platform. And the new platform has like a business login. So 
Leslie, you can log in and self-enroll your own people and you can check on their progress and you have a lot more control over the training that the people in your, 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 your company are having. That's not today. That's the new platform. But, uh, you know, we, we, we certainly expect it to be up and running by, by the end of the month before, you know, the, the, the last class and then and this program is launched. There was one um, more thing, Tom, today when we were, so we have meetings in the morning going over the material and just talking about the, the different things that are being offered. And today Tom said something that I thought was really great. And we were talking about safety and while we're going through the program and we're, we are going over every single slide as a group of five, five of us, yeah, five of us, and we're nitpicking every tiniest thing. And one of the things we say a lot is, don't forget, this is designed for the professional house cleaner. We gotta make sure that it is easily digestible, engaging, et cetera. And the thing that Tom said today that I really appreciated was, yes, we are designing it for them. They're our audience, but the business owner is our customer. And what that means is we're, we are also being very vigilant to put information into the program that is not going to hurt you in any way, that is not going to come back on you, where you're not going to have employees, uh, and I can't remember the ex exact example right this minute, but where you're not going to have employees coming back and saying, they said we're supposed to do blah, 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 and we're not. We were talking specifically about OSHA guidelines on heat and things like that. And we're like, you know what, let's leave that out because that we can have, we can, we can give resources links in another, in another segment, but it doesn't make sense because every area is different. Every part of the country is different and there's state by state regulations and things like that. We don't want to necessarily go too deep on that. Just, you know, we, we left it broad because we didn't want to, uh, to create issues with, employees coming back and saying, right, like you were saying, um, well, this training said this. Or, or like one of the examples was um, like different thresholds, like heat thresholds where it's more dangerous than others. And I don't want something like that. I don't want my employees looking at something that says when the temperature hits 85, it's considered you know, more dangerous and you have to do all of these things because I don't want my people saying, I was looking at the 10 day forecast and in seven days, it's going to be 85 degrees. So <laughs> we, we are looking at the certificate that you paid for at you. Yeah. yeah. So I, I just wanted to make sure that it's clear that while this program absolutely is designed for the professional house cleaner, it's also being created for you to be able to present to them so that it helps you and your business, not just not just them. It's not setting them up to be so much more knowledgeable that now they can go start their own businesses. It's That's not what's being created here. It's so that they can be really effective for you in your business and you can be really confident in what you're providing. Go ahead, Snap. I think this next section is going to be really important, the safety section, because we were talking about work comp injuries and like just different things that we've seen over the years and just trying to, I mean, you can't train for everything, every scenario that's happened, but like Joe was really vigilant on things like, like we looked at where there's been some injuries like stairs and, um, you know, entering and exit homes, like what you're, you know, carrying things and, um, you know, stuff that we all take for granted as business owners. We're like, why would they do that? But if you don't train them or show them, you know, well, then they will do that stuff because sometimes they don't know, right? So it's, but but we were talking about driving and distracted driving. And again, this is not an end all be all, but you know, our, our hope is eventually you could break segments out of this and use these for your training meetings every month. And that there's some really great content to reinforce, um, you know, reinforce constantly with your people because safety just cannot really stop. I mean, that is, Again, it can be a huge overhead of risk with, with driving. And driving is, I think, my biggest overhanging risk for my company. And I, I don't know, you know, you guys, but that's where we've seen a lot of expensive uh, work comp claims and, and auto insurance claims. So, you know, keeping that cost down with some better safety training is, is critical. So 
The one last thing I'll share with you is cleaning business today. If uh, you haven't uh, signed up for our newsletter, subscribe here. And we click here and go to uh, coronavirus downloads. And we added uh, some of the material we went over yesterday. I noticed that the link to the video that Chad uh, produced isn't working. And I reached out to Chad asking him about that. I haven't heard yet, but um, you know, when we get that resolved, I'll get that fixed but you can download the spreadsheet here and that's really the meat and potatoes of it anyway. If you download the spreadsheet and if you were with us yesterday, you basically know what you need to know. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out so that we could get it checked, Linda. I appreciate that. Uh, we have to get out of here. We're at a minute. We have a, a minute and a half that we can fudge on. Matt, do you have a quick answer to the question, where'd you get that fogger? Uh, the, the Wagners. Yeah, those are just, uh, so just Google, um, low, low pressure. Uh, I'm sorry, low volume, high pressure, low volume, high pressure, um, airless paint sprayers, specifically Wagner, a Wagner 250 is a, is a good model for that. It's about between depends on where you buy it, 60 and 80 bucks. You can find them on Amazon for, Hundred, you can find them at your local hardware store for maybe seventy-five. Um, Home just, Depot. Yeah, so Lowe's, Home Depot, or really any—I mean, it's a very com Wagner is a very common um, model, but it's again, it doesn't have to be a Wagner. I just use that as an example because they're cheap and um, the micron level is 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 what it's supposed to be. But the um, uh, high we gotta go. We got thirty seconds. That okay, guys. Oh, Twenty-five seconds. Thank you. Bye, guys. We'll uh, see you guys here tomorrow at 5 o'clock at Smart uh, Business Moves. You guys be safe. Have your questions ready. Thanks. Questions ready. Questions ready. Bye.